Have you been given bad advice by your doctor about how to prevent plaque buildup in your arteries? I'm afraid you might have, and I'm gonna talk about some research in this video that'll make it very, very clear to you what the proper advice should be and should have been. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 21 years of clinical experience, and this video is gonna help you understand your hemoglobin A1C and what the goal for that number should be. A new research article published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology entitled Glycated Hemoglobin and Subclinical Atherosclerosis in People Without Diabetes. This is an excellent article that makes very, very clear the power of having a very low hemoglobin A1C. We already know that people with diabetes have an increased risk of buildup of plaque in their arteries, in their heart, and other places. But what about people with prediabetes? What about people with a normal hemoglobin A1C? What I want you to understand in this video is that there every cutoff given to you by your doctor. Some doctors will say, well, if your A1C is under 6.5, you're not diabetic and that's fine. Others will say, well, it needs to be under 5.7. That's the cutoff for prediabetes. And if you're under 5.7, then you're perfectly safe. The problem is these are arbitrary numbers basically picked out of thin air that don't really give you the full story behind your hemoglobin A1C and what you really want it to be. I put a link to the full research article down in the show notes below for all you nerds out there, and I know who you are who'd like to read the full paper for yourself and see the full implications of what these researchers found. Now, here's probably the most important chart in the whole uh, publication. And what this is, is they lined up everyone in the study, and there were a lot of people in the study. The darker the shade of blue, the more damage or the more plaque buildup that's, being, that's happening in that person's body. Down at the bottom of this graph is the actual hemoglobin A1Cs, which is a measure of glycated hemoglobin in a person's body. So on the left-hand side, you see that the very lowest A1C they talk about is 4.8, which is very, very low, and it's very hard for many of us to get, get it that low. Over on the right-hand side is a hemoglobin A1C of 6.1, which is high, but it's not. that's not diabetic. You have to have a 6.5 or higher to be considered a type two diabetic. So all of the people in this study were not diabetics. These are normal people walking the street with no symptoms whatsoever, and they're building up plaque in their arteries depending on where their hemoglobin A1C currently is. So let's look at people with a hemoglobin A1C of six. Now you can see on this chart, there's a zero line that goes right across the middle. If you fall under that line, then you actually have no plaque buildup in your arteries whatsoever. And that would, uh, that would correlate with a, a coronary artery calcium score of zero or a CAC score of zero. And for people with an A1C of 6.1, you can see that only 18% of them had no plaque buildup in their arteries at all. And they had a substantial amount of plaque buildup in all of uh, their other arteries that were studied. And I'll show you which arteries they looked at in a minute. So as we come down, go towards the left on this chart, we notice that more and more people with that level of A1C have no plaquing. They would be under that, that bold black line that goes right across the middle. And less and less people have uh, measurable plaque buildup in their arteries. And the more you move towards the left of this chart, the more zero CAC scores or no plaque buildup whatsoever you see, and the less documented plaque buildup that you see above that bold dark line. So for example, someone with a hemoglobin A1C of 5.6, and that is considered not diabetic and not pre-diabetic. And many authorities out there will say this is a perfect A1C, but I want you to look at this graph very closely and you'll see that it's not a perfect A1C. It's much better than prediabetes or type two diabetes. But in my estimation and based in, on the research in this study, I really think the goal for all of us, including you, should be a, the lowest hemoglobin A1C that you can personally attain. And so if you've gotten your A1C down from type two diabetic levels into the prediabetic range, that's definitely less bad 
but it's not perfection. It's You're not safe there for the long haul. You want to get your A1C even lower. And so I think this gives you great evidence that a hemoglobin A1C under 5.7 is a bit of an arbitrary cutoff. That's not really a magical number whatsoever. There is still going to be plaque buildup in your arteries, even with an A1C of 5.6. And I'm not saying this to be negative or to, to make you feel bad. I'm, I want you to understand the goal is not an A1C of 5.6. The goal is to have the lowest A1C you can possibly attain based on your genetics, your personal biochemistry, and your diet. And here you can see that for someone with a hemoglobin A1C of 4.8, which is very low and very hard for some of us to attain, 54% of these people had no plaque buildup whatsoever in their arteries. And then of the people who did have some documented plaque buildup, it was a very, very minimal amount. So the, this A1C uh, is much more protective than even a 5.6, and obviously much, much more protective than anything above a 5.6. This study controlled for every other variable that you can think of, from smoking to family history to having high blood pressure, to having uh, lipid disorders. They controlled for all of this stuff. And so the data you see in these charts just tells you a direct relationship between your level of A1C and the plaque buildup that's going on in your arteries. Now in this chart, you see, for example, they checked multiple different arteries. They checked the carotid arteries. And again, the bottom of that chart with the, the red bars is the hemoglobin A1C from 4.8 to 6.1. They also check the inferenal aorta. They check the iliac and femoral arteries that supply your pelvis and your legs and your feet and toes. And they then did a coronary artery calcium score, which is very wise. And you can see in all these graphs, there is a direct relationship between how high your hemoglobin A1C is and how much plaque you're building up in your arteries. Now, question, okay, doctor, I was type 2 diabetic for a few years. I reversed that to prediabetes, and now I'm back to a normal A1C, hopefully as low as you can get it. Is that plaque buildup that I had earlier in life because of eating a high-carbohydrate junk diet, can I reverse that buildup of plaque? And I would say to you that I have personally seen in my clinical practice, as have many other doctors who are colleagues and friends of mine, we have seen the plaque buildup in the carotids, in the coronary arteries, and in the other arteries actually regress as you continue to eat a lower and lower carbohydrate diet in order to get your A1C as low as you can physically get it to go. And that's exactly how you lower your A1C. And indeed, that's how you reverse the plaque buildup in your arteries is you continue to lower the amount of daily carbohydrates that you eat in your diet. Of course, you're gonna eliminate all of the junk foods, the cake, candy, cookie pies, just pure junk. Of course, you're gonna eliminate that. Of course, you're gonna eliminate the soft drinks and the fruit juices. All those things have no nutritional value based on their carbohydrate content whatsoever. But some of us even need to lower other kinds of carbohydrates, like just eating too much fruit, especially grapes and bananas. They're too high in sugar and they don't have enough nutrition to validate or justify that amount of carbohydrate intake. So why would you raise your A1C to get the minuscule amount of nutrition in a banana or a grape? That's dumb. So don't do that for the long term to keep your A1C as low as possible and to keep the amount of plaque buildup in all your arteries as low as possible. You have to eat a car low, low carbohydrate diet and that amount's gonna vary for, for different ones of us. Some people might be able to eat under 100 total grams a day of, of good quality carbohydrates and have a very low A1C and therefore low amount of plaquing in the arteries. Others of you, like me for instance, may have to eat as close to a zero carb diet as they can possibly get in order to have a good, healthy, optimal A1C and not build up plaque in their arteries. So if your doctor tells you that your hemoglobin A1C of 5.8 or 6.1 or 6.4 is okay, that's fine, that's, that's the goal, that is terrible, terrible advice for your long-term health and vitality. You want your A1C to be as low as you can possibly get it 
to protect you from heart attack and stroke and all the other complications that come from plaque buildup in your arteries. So why do organizations like the American Diabetes Association say that the goal is a hemoglobin A1C of 6.4 or lower? That's a good question. I have no idea the logic behind that decision. Maybe you should email them and ask them yourself. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.